Hi everyone, Mark here from AmericanNarration.com and in this short video I want to go over dissolved oxygen, oxygen in a pond environment, how you can maintain it, what uh, represents good oxygen levels, uh, what can create problems for folks with uh, fish management and things like that, basically what you need to know to help manage your pond better and no question oxygen is a key part of all that. Oxygen is life. You know, you and I, uh, as well as most things we know in this world, would not be able to survive without oxygen. And in an aquatic environment, what we're talking about is dissolved oxygen, or DO. And it's a critical factor to maintain the health, uh, productivity, the vitality of a pond or lake or any aquatic ecosystem. And it affects the well-being of fish, and other aquatic creatures, and vertebrates, plants, and microorganisms, all of which are important to not only create, but also maintain a healthy pond. The amount of oxygen dissolved in water is influenced by some different factors. One of the main ones is the temperature of the water itself. Pressure can be a factor. Salinity and other chemistry within the water it has a part to play, and then also Interestingly, the presence of plants or things like algae, they can affect and have an influence on dissolved oxygen levels in a pond. In terms of temperature and its influence, cold water can hold more oxygen than warm water. As an example, if you have a pond where the water temperature is around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, that water can only hold around 7.5 milligrams per liter of DO at its saturation point. And uh, one note here, milligrams per liter is a common way to measure uh, oxygen levels in a pond. So at 90 degrees, 7.4 milligrams per liter is basically the saturation point of that water. In cooler water, around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, that water can hold around 11 0.9 milligrams per liter at saturation. So the ability of cooler water to retain oxygen is much, much better. Conversely, when it gets hot outside, and this is important to remember for people that are managing ponds in warmer environments, that water cannot maintain or hold on to oxygen as well as cold water can. Plants are in effect a double-edged sword when it comes to oxygen. During the day, as they go through photosynthesis, they actually release oxygen into the water. But at night, when photosynthesis stops, they pull oxygen from the water. And so there's this ebb and flow on a daily cycle where plants definitely can influence and affect DO levels in the pond. The decomposition process of organic material, organic buildup and matter, that can utilize oxygen as well. This is important to note, and we'll talk about this more later on, but the way that a pond breaks down organic matter is through the use of natural occurring microbes. And these microbes, for the most part, many of them are aerobic, and for them to work well, they have to have and utilize good dissolved oxygen levels in the water. And so as they go through their business and their processes, they will pull some oxygen uh, from the water itself. So what is an optimum oxygen level in a pond environment? Mostly we're going to refer to these numbers in relation to fish health and well-being. But you can also cross-correlate this information to say that the numbers also would affect microorganisms like the beneficial bacteria that, that we mentioned a bit ago and, and other species in the pond. So the optimal range, and this is for most fish species, uh, there's a few that may lie outside of this with higher demands, but for most fish, the optimal range of dissolved oxygen in a pond is between 5 to 9 milligrams per liter. Um, and it can go a bit higher than that. Uh, it can go a little bit lower than that, but optimum you want to be in that range of 5 to 9 milligrams per liter. Within this range, you've got a very healthy ecosystem. All the things are supported well. Uh, they're not stressed and they're not suffering because of anything related to oxygen. It's a very healthy ecosystem. 
the minimum levels that you want to see in a pond environment. Fish can start to experience stress when the DO level gets below 5 milligrams per liter. Prolonged exposure at anything below 5 milligrams per liter can definitely lead to health issues. Uh, you will often see reduced growth rates and their ability, their immune system and the ability to fend off diseases starts to go down and certainly as you continue to watch this drop at four, three, there's more and more pressure put on them because of low DO. Critical levels of dissolved oxygen usually come somewhere below two milligrams per liter and these are critically low numbers. Fish can start to die, especially if the level is maintained uh, for a couple hours to a couple days. You could definitely lead to mass fish loss and it is a, a crisis, if you will, of oxygen when the numbers get that low. Uh, other things are affected too when you get into this mid-range minimum level and below something in the three or four milligrams per liter range. The microbes, beneficial microbes that are used for cleaning the pond will start to be hindered. They won't work as well. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, organic decomposition will be slowed or, or stunted. And then also, you will see these microbes have a natural ability to help mitigate nutrients. They are very good at utilizing nitrogen and can help with phosphorus levels too. And when they are stunted in their, in their processing, uh, they will not do as good a job at mitigating these nutrients, and the nutrients can lead to things like algae growth. So it's an important thing to note. In the photograph here, what you're looking at is a oxygen meter, dissolved oxygen meter. And years ago, these were harder to come by in the sense that usually you had to be in aquaculture or in uh, research, and the units were very expensive to acquire. Uh, now, fortunately, we're seeing a lot of lower-priced units coming on Amazon, for example, which is where this one was listed. I'll list a few below of, of those that I re recommend looking at. But, but what's nice about these meters is that you can test the DO level in your pond at any time of day or night. You can get a feel after repeated testing of where the pond tends to be, how weather affects it, how temperature affects it, uh, how fish load could affect it and you can keep an eye on things and if everything is good and stable great but if you start to see a drop it will start to indicate a problem potentially before you ever get into a crisis stage and thereby you can ward it off typically you can improve oxygenation through various means which we'll talk about in the next slide but it gives you a, a warning of what may be coming. And, I, and there has been many cases where people who are keeping an eye on their DO levels have, have fended off uh, catastrophic fish losses and other things just because they were keeping an eye on the DO levels with a tool like this. So managing oxygen levels, what can you do to help? Well, first and foremost, number one, you know I'm going there. Uh, aeration is a key tool here. It's the only way to really add significant amounts of oxygen to a pond environment. It can come through adding a fountain, a surface aerator, or bottom-based diffused aerators. They all help increase oxygen in various ways in a pond environment. They are especially useful during very hot, warm conditions, the warm summer months, uh, at protecting fish and maintaining uh, a better, healthier pond overall. They can, in some, time, some cases, help with uh, issues like algae, and so definitely worth consideration. And they are definitely a useful tool when a uh, pond is heavily stocked, densely stocked with fish. You can also help the cause of maintaining good oxygen levels by reducing organic loading in the pond. This would be going through the regular removal of organic debris, uh, making sure you don't get a bunch of grass clippings in there on a routine basis. If you have a bit of algae around the pond, removing that isn't a bad thing to do. Uh, leave debris, trying to work on maintaining a cleaner pond overall will go a long way. One common thing too that comes up, whether you're talking about a small koi pond or a larger pond with game fish, if you're feeding these fish, Make sure that the feed that you provide is readily consumed by the fish. You want it to be 
eaten. If you're seeing a large amount of food going to the bottom uneaten and not consumed, that is just adding to the organic loading of the pond and it's not a great idea. So manage your fish feeding routine if necessary to make sure it's predominantly getting consumed by the fish. You want to consider managing plant growth. Aquatic plants, as I said, they're both a good and a bad thing in a, in a way because they produce oxygen during the day, but they will pull oxygen at night. And so if you have a lot of plant growth, a lot of growth, you will see a wider, more unstable uh, fluctuation in the DO levels in a pond environment in a 24-hour daily cycle. So if you want to bring more stability into that and reduce these swings, then you want to bring the plant growth under control. This may be through treatments, uh, it may be through a combination of aeration and some other type of treatment, but uh, keeping plant growth at some reasonable manageable level is a good thing. I don't think uh, no plant growth is not necessarily ideal, but you definitely don't want it to overtake the pond and create uh, very wide DO swings. Another point about plants that I want to mention here too before we go on, very important, when you treat a plant problem, let's say you've got an algae problem that's pretty significant and you want to kill it. Whether you're killing plants like algae or weeds, when they die off, they will pull oxygen from the water as well. And so if the growth is very, very significant, you could dramatically affect the DO level very rapidly in a pond. Many people who have killed their fish simply because of a misapplication of a treatment like a herbicide or an algicide. Of course, you want to have robust aeration going when you start this process. But the other thing is, if it's warm, and if the water, again, can't hold a lot of oxygen, you may be better off working a, a large mass of plant growth, working on it in segments or smaller sections at a time, thereby limiting the amount or effect of the die-off over an extended period of time whether, rather than all at once. That will help uh, at least keep from influencing these DO levels too much in a very rapid and mass die-off, so keep that in mind. Finally, when it comes to fish stocking, understand that fish will both breed and multiply and they will grow. And as both of these things happen, they will continue to put more and more pressure on a pond environment. First and foremost, I think you see this a lot more in small pond environments with a very contained gallon volume type capacity. Uh, you will also see it or could see it in, in large fish ponds too because again there have been cases where uh, they get very overstocked with a particular type of fish, could be bass or whatever, and they put more of a stress on the pond and again you have a condition, an additional thing come in like hot weather and all of a sudden you get this big loss of fish because of not only the weather but also overstocking and just too many fish for the pond size. Best advice I can give you is to communicate with whoever is supplying the fish to you about their recommended stocking rates and try to maintain that. You don't need to go overboard with it. Understand that aeration can play a part uh, in all of this too because aquaculture operations have very high fish loads, very high densities of fish, but they also have extremely robust aeration systems in place and they're checking their DO levels quite routinely, I mean multiple times a day, to maintain healthy, uh, healthy amounts of DO. And so they know their pond environment very well and what they can hold. The more aeration you have, typically the more uh, dense uh, fish population you can maintain. But again, for most of us that are in, in a hobbyist form or whatever, uh, just follow the recommendations from the supplier and you'll probably be fine there. So that about wraps it up. I hope this helps you understand a little more about oxygen in your pond, what can affect it, what numbers are good, not good, and what to watch for. As always, if you need help with your pond or pond aeration, if you have questions, reach out to me. My name is Mark. I'm at AmericanAeration.com. I'll be happy to help, and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.